in the words of Jaws, you're gonna need a bigger bowl. Oh, that's not something you see every day. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you, you are well. Welcome to our kitchen. Today, we're trying something with one ingredient. And it's not cardboard. Inside this box is legitimately some potatoes that I ordered from Etsy. These are called Golden Yukon Potatoes, and you might have heard me say that recently in videos that a lot of recipes have been trying to have suggested them. So I'm thinking to myself, this is a one ingredient recipe, what is the worst that can happen? And well, I'm having scary flashbacks of the rainbow holographic chocolate thing from the other day. Thank you so much for the support with that, we got there. But this is a, a, a golden Yukon potato, and I've had them in storage for about a week, but they're okay, I've kept them nice and cool, dark, they're starting to grow a bit more, but we don't, we can worry about this anyway. But hopefully we should have a nice golden inside on it. Ooh. Apparently it's a really good all-round potato, but I can't get them anywhere in the shops in the UK, hence me spending 25 pounds on two kilos of these. I thought, right, I've got to really match up and go for it. But King Edwards and stuff like that are fine instead. Uh, a nice, rich texture and subtle creaminess with low starch. I genuinely thought it was a wind-up. Like, I've always thought of like Etsy of like homemade gifts and things like that, but no, some farmers selling actual potatoes and there's no sort of slip in there for me to give them a shout out or a thank you. Thank you for letting me spend 25 pounds on potatoes, but I think this recipe is gonna be worth it. If you can't get them and don't wanna spend 25 pounds on them, King Edward potatoes apparently are a perfect, adequate replacement. All right, Pat. But what are we making, I hear you say, Fridge? Well, we are making a thousand layer potatoes. Essentially, the most epic chips, potentially, ever. Small print, it's not really a thousand layers. There are a couple of other ingredients, but they're more like oils and fats, plus salt, okay? We're gonna use some duck fat, and if you have never made chips using duck fat, absolutely outstanding. Now, it's kind of like a comfit, which basically means you slow cook something in its own fats. Now, as far as I know, a potato doesn't really have that much fat. So that's where the duck fat comes in, I know. Quackers. So we've got quite a bit of prep to do. I need to wash every one of these potatoes, peel them, get the mud off, all that stuff. Peeling them, unfortunately, I feel is actually necessary here. Once we've done that, we're gonna bake them. We're then gonna chill them, and then we're gonna fry them, all to end up with these epic thousand layer slabs, which are probably maybe, hopefully, if they look like you've got 15 layers, that's maybe what we'll go for, I don't know. It should look absolutely amazing. So let's get going. In they go. You can see they've got a little bit of growth on them where I didn't actually use them straight away, but honestly, this is fine. So we'll give them a. That looks blue and murky, doesn't it? So all I'm going to do is take a peeler and just let the skins go into the water like this. Oh, this is actually really nice to peel. I'm enjoying this. I am genuinely. So excited to try this. All right, so we're done, and I actually ended up using the whole box. I ordered ugh, two and a half kilos of potato, because my theory is, when you peel potatoes, obviously you're taking a little bit of weight off of it, so I want to just still make sure that my weight of the potatoes is two kilos after they've been peeled. Oh my gosh. <gasps> we have got bang on two kilos. That's, that's worked out amazing. And with all the peels left over, give them a dry. Birds love it, don't have to dry it for the birds, I don't think. Dry them, fry them, and then you've got crisps. You don't need a Barry Lewis veg prep kit for this, but it helps. Uh, they're all sold out at the moment, but I will be getting some more back in. But basically this uh, is a mandolin, so that it enabled us to... So they're nice and super thin, okay? If you don't have one, you can do it with a peeler. How appealing. So all different shapes and sizes, but the thickness is the same. That's the most important thing. So this is gonna fill up quite quickly. We'll put them into a... That's it. In the words of Jaws, you're gonna need a bigger bowl. So I'm not gonna salt bay, but what I am gonna use is salt, and this is smoked salt flakes. It tells me you use standard salt, but I blooming love smoked salt. I'm gonna try and salt bay, there you go. Oh, you smell like a barbecue. Yes! And we can put some more right on at the end. So we need 200 grams of uh, duck fat. Oh my gosh. 
had loads of suggestions to make this and the website referred to was called Food and Wine. Uh, and the next step is to get an eight inch square tin, the kind of one that I'd normally put brownies in. That's some baking parchment that I cut out earlier uh, with a little bit of an overhang apparently. You'll also need a second eight inch square tin, exactly the same size that fits in there, but you don't need it right now. But for now, let's layer. The potatoes are generally rounded, so they're not gonna fit neatly into the corners. So just for the first layer, princess, I'm cutting a right angle. So if I just show you here, it fits into that corner snugly. To be honest, I think this step's probably a bit overkill anyway, because I think we will just be cutting inside there anyway. So yeah, just layer it. That is the first layer, princess. All we do now is keep repeating that, but do your best to overlap it evenly, particularly at the joins. And that's it, just keep going until you either run out of potatoes, patience, room, sanity, Star Wars puns. Here we go, the last piece going on. I did actually start to count the layers and I lost count. I think there's at least 10 in there. Quite close to a thousand, just put a few zeros on the end. So that is completely wrapped in foil. On a side note, I needed to buy some more baking parchment that we lined it in, and that stuff is expensive now. This oven is preheated to 130 fan, 150 C, or 300 Fahrenheit. Gas mark two, so basically quite a low heat. It's that slow cook. It goes in there for two and a half hours until they're super tender. I guess if it was really, really hot, there's that risk that the fat could get extremely hot and maybe burn it or spill out but I've got to wait that amount of time now. That's really useful. When I'm doing the garden kitchen, I can have however layout I want. I was thinking of having a screen with shout outs, but also I could have like a constant temperature conversion chart on the wall. Oh, any cool ideas you've got, let me know. But I will still be filming in here from time to time. It's just for like live streams. There's gonna be loads and loads more content. So uh, look out for that with friends and family. It's gonna be nuts. Two and a half hours, see you in a bit. All right, and apparently we put it straight down onto a wire rack. Oh, it smells like chips. So remember we did the homemade puff pastry before when we talked about lamination, all the different folds? We have created layers within this, and apparently tomorrow we can actually cut it and stack it and make it even higher if we want and double the layers of it. We could probably triple them. We'll probably make that call and see how it goes, but for now, transfer the pan to a wire rack and remove the foil, leaving the parchment sheet on the potatoes. Set a second eight inch square pan on top of the potatoes in the pan and weigh it down with unopened canned goods. All right, so we've got that. And uh, I, I can put a bit of weight on it, but I don't want to sit like this for a, an hour. Oh, I've got something heavy, all right. <laughs> I've got a wet concrete block from our build. Yeah, this is where the dojo is going to be. This is going to be my garden kitchen, the backup one. And we're going to have like a smoker and a pizza oven out the back as well for outdoor cooking and live streams. Cool, huh? Anyhow. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. So as that cools down, it's compressing it all together. I apparently have to leave this for about an hour. And I think I'm going to stick another concrete block on top. Why not? Oh. Yeah, my wire rack's not liking it. I think I might take that off a little bit, actually. There we go, that's better. All right, we'll leave this for an hour. So I think normally you're supposed to put like a few tin cans in to keep the weight down. That's gonna compress it quite a lot. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll find something. We can't put a concrete block in the fridge, that'd be amazing. No. Okay. Now that is safety glass on my fridge. Uh, I need to, if I put it on there, that could shatter that. And this is a new fridge, so Mrs. B will kill me. So I'm gonna, oh, the alarm's going off. So I'm gonna put it in this drawer thing because that's gonna be a bit stronger. <sighs> okay, see you in the morning. Uh, morning folks, I think I've got something in my eye. Anyhow, overnight I uh, have been chilling my potato cake and read some reviews of this recipe and I'm kind of worried. <laughs> I thought this was going to be easy. Apparently, during the frying stage, uh, it can all fall apart. So it's important to keep all of the ones you're not using frozen before you let it go. See what I did there? Into the oil. So let's get it out first of all. I'm expecting it to be a little bit slimy with the duck fat between all the layers. Yeah. 
I mean, that's pretty squished. It does smell a bit like cold leftover chips from a fish and chip shop. Brilliant. Yeah, that really smells. Right, cut into strips. Okay. Oh wow, look at that one. Oh, you can see the plan there. We're gonna stick this on a tray. So here we go, a load of potato blocks, but they are getting to room temperature so quickly. We have to put them in the freezer a minimum of half an hour. I might go a little longer than that. The only thing that I haven't done is the recipe is telling me there, you see how it's this high, to actually halve them again so they're half the height. I don't wanna do that. I want mine to look fairly epic. So we've got a few to play with. Let's get them nice and cold. And that's not something you see every day. All right, that has been 40 minutes. I've got some oil in my wok here. Woo. So the oil is steadily at 365 Fahrenheit, so about 180C. Wow, that is literally the heat of the oven, but I'm gonna keep the thermometer there so I can keep it at a steady temperature. I wanna get it super hot. Sometimes I get the oil a little cooler so I have more control, but I feel like this might help keep them together for that instant shock, you know? So I'm just gonna get one, and we'll plug it in straight from the freezer now. Here we go, here we go. I promised myself I wouldn't move it very much at all. I don't want to damage it. I've got to be honest, I'm actually feeling really confident about this. That is holding its shape magnificently. Oh my gosh, look at that colour. Look, can you see that? Look at those layers. That's worked amazingly. I'm gonna go for a few more. Look, and I stuck some together on a stick. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Ooh, ah. Ooh, hee, ha, hee, ha, ooh, hee, ooh. <laughs> now, the bad news is, because I put so many in, the temperature dropped dramatically, which has still resulted in some working like this, but also some that have fallen apart, like that, that go into my kind of like off-cut bin. The longer they're in there, the more chance they've got to separate. So keep the oil nice and hot and only put in a few at a time, otherwise you'll lower the temperature too much and it will pretty much treble, like that, treble the frying time. Not good. All completely edible still, but they just don't look as cool as these. Outstanding. Oh my gosh, they look so crispy. I hope you'll agree, they look rather epic indeed. This is probably one of my most favorite ever Barry tries. Don't forget to check that playlist out and if you've got any cool ideas for Barry tries, any recipes from chefs, blogs, all that kind of stuff, I love putting them to the test. This is kind of heaven for me. Oh, <laughs> you've got the golden, crispy, crunchy, flavor packed, extremely naughty layers running through there. I think the salt, that little bit we've done there, is definitely needed, otherwise it would just taste a little bit like ash. Mashed potato is fine, and the filling, as you press down, or despite the crispiness on the outside, it's still soft in the middle, so it became a big puddle of mash. And I'm loving that. Oh, stunking. But there we are, I've got loads left as well. Uh, if you do try them, top tip though, keep the oil nice and hot, only do a few at a time, freeze them properly and don't touch them. And I think you'll nail this. If you try it, send me a photo on your social media platform of choice. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already for regular videos and make sure your notifications are turned on so you get told about it. Awesome. See you later. L-O-V-E is how you spell food. Gonna make some truffles to get you in the mood. To me, your support is smooth as silk. When I have my cereal, I pour on milk. If you got a food mix, so give it a whirl. I gotta let you know I'm still cooking in love with you, girl. Hey, Barry, what's that new workout you're doing? Oh, it's the chilled overnight weight diet. You just put your weights in the fridge. <laughs> I forgot these were cold. It's, um, it's not fun.